Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 359. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 358 to 369. Trick 359, this is related to three, Trick 358 and Trick 360. In all of these videos, what are we doing? We're seeing how to return multiple items from one lookup value. Now, uh, the first one we did, uh, 58, we did it for a table. Now we're going to do it for a column. Now here's the key ideas here. What do you do when you want to look up one thing and return multiple items? Now, in our last video, we looked up a thing like the number 11 or a win. Over here, we'll look up a device, a computer device. But here, our lookup thing is a number. We want to look up a number and return all the numbers. Now, in particular, this example is we get this data like this, and there's some words and numbers. And we want, with a formula, to extract only the numbers. Now, if you only had a little bit of data, it would be easy just to right-click Sort and then copy and paste just the numbers. But if you had you know, tons of data like this, or it's a reoccurring thing, then a formula like this might be beautiful. All right, now notice two things. We're going to tell our formula, please look up a number, which is the one thing, and we want to return multiple items. But here's another way to think of this. Our lookup, we're looking up a number, but notice in the lookup column there are multiple items. So really it's like there's duplicates here. That's why when you get to a situation like this, you have to use uh, a big, ugly, a big, beautiful uh, array formula. Of course, it depends on your point of view. To me, they're quite beautiful. All right, now the first thing is we need to count. Now, how do we count numbers? Nothing like in our last uh, video, we had to do a, a multiple count ifs. We just use the count function. Count does only that. It will count numbers. So we highlight all that, and boom, we have our count. All right, now, so for a formula, when we copy it down, and this could be as big as you want, uh, we don't know how many there are going to be. So we need a way to turn on and off our formula. Well, it'll be quite easy. We'll say, um, as we copy it down, are we through a row that's past 4? If we are, we'll um, show nothing. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use equals if and then the rows functions. Actually, uh, we used this same construct in our last video. In our next video, we use the columns, because we're going to be copying it across columns. Now, rows. I'm sitting in D2, D dollar sign 2, colon D2. Notice one of these is absolute, one of these is relative. Right now, row says how many rows are there? 2 to 2 is 1. But this will turn to D3, D4 as we copy it down. So when we get down to the next one, how many rows are there from 2 to 3? Two. So that's a way to increment a number inside a formula. And is that less than or equal to 4? And we have to lock that one going all the way down. Now, this will uh, turn it off and on. But if it's less than 4, what do we want? We want to look up a value. Now, we're going to use comma. I'm going to change the. That just gives us a little bit more room. The value of true is going to be our lookup index function. Now, the index function is so amazing and versatile. We want to give it an array of values, which holds the lookup values. And then we need to tell it what row number. Those are the only two arguments we're going to use. Now, the array is going to be all of these. And remember, this could be as, bigger, as big as you'd like. And I'm going to hit the F4 key because it needs to be locked. Comma, now the row number. Here's where it gets tricky. And in all three of these videos we're doing, the key idea is that we need multiple row numbers as we copy the formula down. So notice right now we need, here's the data set, that purple outline, that's one. So we need row two. We don't need three. We need four, five, six, and then none of the others. So how in the world are we going to get multiple row numbers as we copy the formula down? That's where the small function comes in. The small function can give us, if we put in as an array all of the row numbers, so if we put in the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right, and did some conditions which will uh, eliminate everything except for 2, 3, 4, 5. Remember, it's not these row numbers here. It's the uh, actual data set row numbers. But if we could give the small 2, 4, 5, 6, 
all of them at once, we could then put a k in this little incrementer right here, which then would retrieve the four smallest, which would be end up giving two, four, five, six. So that's the idea here. And we have to use for our array if, and the test, the test is going to be, oh, it's it, are they numbers? So we put is number is number, and then highlight this whole range here. Now, as we copy down, we need that locked, so I'm going to hit the F4 key. So the logical test is is number. Now, what does is number do? All it does is give trues or falses, which is what the if function wants. But notice, it's going to give us an array. So it's going to give us false, true, false, true, 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 false, 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 right? Well, that's what we want, because our next argument is going to be all the row numbers. So we're going to use the row function, which tells us what row we're in. And when we highlight the whole range, normally it only expects like A2. But when we give it uh, a bunch of values like this, it'll spit out 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But guess what? We don't want 2 to 10. We want 1 to 9. So we close, oops, close parentheses. But I've got to come back here and hit the F4, because that's got to be locked in all directions also. Right, so the trick here is since we want to uh, retrain, retain all of the cell reference only amongst this range or only where the formulas are, we want to somehow convert this 210 to a 19. So what do we do? We do 1 minus row and then click right there. Notice that cell reference is within our range, which is what you want when you're building a formula. That way, if um, if you did it out here somewhere, if something was deleted, it would mess up your formula. So I locked it. But now that's a problem. 2 minus 2 is 0. 2 minus 3 is 1. We really want not 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. We want 1 to 9. So we put plus 1. Now I'm going to, that's the value of true. I'm going to close parentheses. We do not need the value of false. Now it comes back to our. Uh, small function, and it wants the k, so I'm going to put a comma. Notice the, the small, it said this was the true false, and then we gave it a bunch of rows, so only the rows that matches the trues will be the array. And now we need to do our incrementer. Copy, and then paste right there. Now I close parentheses on the uh, small, and now it says uh, you've done your row number, so I close parentheses on that. That's our value of 2. We have to put a comma, because remember, we're turning this off when it gets past 4. So our uh, false cell value will be double quote, double quote for blank. Close parentheses. This is an array formula, so Control, Shift, and Enter. Now I click and drag it down. Now uh, if I add a new value right here, is it going to show up? Sure enough. If I made these all words, sure enough, that goes. So there you go. Uh, that was our second formula. Now we were looking up one item, a number, returning multiple items. And uh, this one was delivered in only a column. When we come back, we'll see how to do the same thing for a computer database when there's, mul there's duplicates in our lookup column. And we want to return them in a uh, row, not in a column. All right, we'll see you next trick.